China is stepping up its drive for global leadership in new technologies, with plans to invest more than $1 trillion in the economy by introducing everything from wireless networks to artificial intelligence. In a master plan backed by Chinese President Xi Jinping, Beijing intends to invest approximately $1.4 trillion over the next six years, calling on city governments and private tech powerhouses, such as Huawei Technologies, to lay 5G wireless networks, install cameras and sensors, and develop AI software that will underpin everything from autonomous driving to automated factories and mass surveillance. The new infrastructure project is likely to mostly benefit Chinese enterprises, ranging from Alibaba Group Holding Limited and Huawei to SenseTime Group Limited, at the cost of U.S. companies. The development of new infrastructure, which refers to infrastructure that's digital, smart, and innovative, has recently become a top priority in China. China is wrapping up plans to build a new digital infrastructure across the country as part of its post-COVID-19 relief package, including 5G networks, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, intercity high-speed rail, and research and development institutions. As a result, a new wave of government support for private sector participation can be seen, whether through the issuance of special bonds, the encouragement of public-private partnerships, or the extension of credit support. These plans complement China's other industrial policies, such as Made in China 2025 and the China Standards 2035 plan, and together they signal China's ambitious long-term strategy of becoming the global leader in high-tech and innovative industries of the future. There are now new opportunities for early investors to participate in these rapidly growing technology industries and subsectors. Furthermore, large industry players have the opportunity to invest in projects that will accelerate the commercialization of emerging technology. Foreign investors should continue to monitor the latest policy developments in their target investment area, as more government policies to guide the development of each of these new technologies are expected to be released soon. So what exactly is China's new infrastructure strategy? The CCP announced at the 2020 National People's Congress that in addition to doubling down on its Made in China 2025 and China Standards 2035 initiatives, it would spend approximately $1.4 trillion on a public spending program for digital infrastructure, 5G networks, industrial internet, intercity transportation and rail systems, data centers, AI, ultra-high voltage power transmission, and new energy vehicle charging stations are among the seven key areas covered by the new infrastructure. The new infrastructure plan, which was initially billed as a way for China to achieve domain independence and accelerate industrialization, has evolved into a long-term national economic strategy. However, in April 2020, the National Development and Reform Commission revised the definition of new infrastructure to include three broad aspects of next-generation technology, innovative infrastructure, information infrastructure, and integrated infrastructure. In general, these three categories serve three primary functions. Innovative infrastructure serves as a foundation for the research and development required to build next-generation products. The tools we can use to upgrade our traditional industries are known as information infrastructure, and integrated infrastructure is a large-scale and integrated application of these technologies to build the framework for the development of smart cities across China. From 2020 to 2025, new infrastructure will be built. Analysts at the CCID and Haitong Securities estimate that investment in new infrastructure projects will total between $1.43 trillion and $2.51 trillion over the next five years. Following the NDRC's clarification in the scope of what constitutes new infrastructure, 25 provinces have launched their own local plans. Among them is the Shanghai Plan which has set a total investment target of $38.7 billion over the next three years, while Guangzhou has signed 16 digital new infrastructure projects worth a total of $8.09 billion. Zhejiang Province, home to tech behemoth Alibaba, has also committed to a new round of projects, 61% of which are in the high-tech sector, a 20% increase over the previous year. According to Zhu Jinping, former NDRC deputy director. The scale of upstream and downstream businesses in the industrial chain will see $400 billion in investment, with an average annual growth rate of 22.6%. The same momentum can be seen across various types of technology, with China announcing that it will invest $72 billion in UHV, $15 billion in AI chips, and $93.4 billion in the industrial internet by 2025. China has committed to building 5 million 5G-based stations by the end of 2025, a 25-fold increase in less than five years. The biggest difference between the 2020 stimulus package and the state-led investment push in traditional infrastructure in the aftermath of the 2008 global financial crisis is that the government is much more reliant on market forces and private investment this time around. As a result, there are numerous opportunities for business stakeholders to participate in China's next phase of development. Nonetheless, the government will invest to varying degrees in each sector. As a result, private technology firms must decide whether they're willing to align their participation with government directives in order to form partnerships with state-owned enterprises. For example, research and satellite communications will have a high government investment ratio, whereas applications development, virtual reality, 
3D printing and smart robot production will typically be private investments with low industry barriers to foreign investment. Small and medium-sized businesses drive supply chain innovation both upstream and downstream. Small and medium-sized enterprises SMEs in China, like in other countries, have been a critical driver of innovation, accounting for approximately 66% of patents issued. Though direct investment in infrastructure may not be a viable option for SMEs, there are numerous opportunities for them to participate either upstream or downstream of the supply chain. The potential opportunities available to SMEs have two sides, supply and demand. Businesses can choose to participate in the development and manufacturing of these new technologies, or they can participate in the commercial application across a variety of industries. On the supply side, there are additional opportunities on the outskirts of this large-scale infrastructure build. Many opportunities exist for small to medium-sized businesses in the industry chain upstream, equipment manufacturing, and downstream, program development, and the government encourages them. Take 5G as an example. While investment in the network itself is, in practice, limited to a few large Chinese players, there are opportunities with the supply chain. This is especially true in the automobile industry. 5G network giant Huawei recently announced a partnership with 18 car makers, including FAO Group, BYD, and T3 Mobility, to build a 5G-enabled automobile ecosystem in the automobile industry, moving to accelerate the uptake of 5G technology in smart cars and achieve a significant transformation of industrial capacity. On the demand side, there will be a plethora of new use scenarios that will accompany the introduction of each new type of next-generation technology. Using the same 5G example, which provides a combination of faster speed, higher capacity, and lower latency, will allow for the digitalization of traditional business models. As 5G technology matures, more opportunities for its application across industries will emerge. Traditional industries such as medical care, education, retail, manufacturing, services, and logistics will inevitably need to shift to digital business models that can adapt to radical digital transformations or the application of new technologies. CloudMinds Technology, a SoftBank-backed startup in Beijing, donated 5G-enabled cloud-based robots to Wuhan hospitals, for example. The robots work around the clock and perform tasks such as remote nursing, taking body temperature, measuring heart rates and blood oxygen levels, medication delivery, disinfection, and cleaning. That brings us to our next topic, which is investing in China's tech industry, recognizing the challenges as well as the opportunities. Though there are many opportunities for investors in China's tech industry, as the global technology industry becomes more politicized, the challenges may become more severe. This is especially true as China-US geopolitical competition reaches a tipping point. With mutual tariff hikes, U.S. restrictions on high-tech exports to China, and targeted restrictions on large tech companies with strong national ties, like Huawei and TikTok, all resulting in an inevitable reshuffling of technological supply chains between the two countries. Countries around the world will continue to compete to be the first to successfully develop, commercialize, and thus set the standards for the various types of new generation technology that will emerge. Indeed, this is already beginning to happen with the release of the China Standards 2035 plan, which is an initial blueprint of standardized processes and specifications to ensure that products in the tech industries around the world are built to work together seamlessly. Though there will inevitably be a growing sense of techno-nationalism, complete technology decoupling is unlikely to occur because technology supply chains still require the participation of many foreign players. Managers and strategic investors should seek out specialists to develop an appropriate market entry strategy that accounts for newly emerging challenges in an increasingly competitive but opportunity-rich landscape.